poems from uh, The Dig of Love. This is called No I Band-Aid. Alone in the arms of Amorpheus, I battle banal demons who sit like grease inside my blood. Pain is the saddle which rides me. Pain is the cowboy's grin. More morphing, please. There's an unnecessary heaviness in heaven. There is an insufficient delinquency in hell. The Taoists teach a painted tree is as grievous as false dawn. But Buddha is a fireman, and Vishnu cools the anxious. Plus there's Jesus. He cooks the books. As the stained glass soul emerges from a covered bridge, it is chased by a yowling mutt toward a nest of sleeping wasps. We have to mend the fences, whether they're broken or not. Uh, and this one is called Two Weeks in a Dristan Land. <laughs> when I washed up alone on the shore of the blistered isle, I smelled the bleach of burst anemones, the sweet arousal of the dungeness crabs, the seaweed of sour twigs and feces. I saw debutante goddesses abashing their swains for what hadn't come to pass. I felt the uncanny glee of the solitary palm, the dilatory curiosity of the air, the aloofness of chimerical trees. I heard dolphins and swans aligned against integrity, inspired to co-op the sunshine and humble the thunder. I tasted hostility in the meanest weed, a cynical longevity in the beach fleas and swamp bees. A flash of happiness in the bold symmetry of the island flag. And resolved in my lately vacant heart to replace Othello's handkerchief, to repent spurning Cleopatra the Queen, and to restore the itching eyes of Gloucester. And uh, in uh, the book, there are a series of poems about a character uh, called Cranshaw, and uh, it's going to be one of those. This is called. Cranshaw at the dinner party. Cranshaw leans back in his chair and cracks the back leg. He sits suddenly straight to hide what he did. The hostess steers the conversation to the politics of bullying, which everyone decides is the nature of the beast. Dessert is served. Toffee cheesecake with kiwi. It begins to hail. What does the future hold, the hostess asks. Says Mark, the wise guy, hands. Maury the forest offers opportunity. The reins, insists Bertram. The future holds the reins. Just men, the hostess queries. No woman has anything to add. Cranshaw stares at the woman whose shawl refuses to cover her breasts. He leans forward and touches her knee with his toe. Back, she yelps. Bertram bellows. The future holds back. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, this one's called What a Day. I was always more comfortable with the ponies than you were more comfortable with bedding windows and $2 bills than you were. A racetrack is a dirty, degenerate place. But Dickens wrote about them, and Degas and Manet painted them. There's an electricity at the track that I sought out that scared you. What is the heart most like? For you, two moons. For me, the thunder of a thousand hooves. During high school, I spent every Sunday in Pimlico, gambled what I could, but mostly just hung out, waiting for someone to hit the trifecta, but no one ever did. What is heartbreak most like? For you, a baby skunk. For me, a photo finish. You came with me once, complained about the sun, the wind, the noise, the litter, the people who leered at you, the people who, in a hurry to place a bet, rushed by you, jostled you, bumped smack into you. How uncomfortable the bleaches were, you said. How boring the wait between the races, you moaned. I like you, but 
we're not the same. You're poor soul. Um, said. Alone in a room, we can get along. Out of the world, all bets are off. <laughs> this one's called Home for Danny. Sometimes, you're camping in Wisconsin, thinking about Melville, and wondering what he'd make of Nat King Cole. And sometimes you're at a job in Idaho, and you hear the pop of cooking soup, but there's nothing in the microwave. And sometimes you're in Lubbock, in a hotel filled with polished apples and carts of recovered luggage. And sometimes you're in Boca Raton, in the company of salesmen whose wives died of complications. And sometimes you're in Park City, harried as a lariat, lonely as a Cody, Sometimes you're in Park Slope, staring from a convention window at girders so innocent they seem almost botanic. And sometimes, floating in the Gulf of Mexico, you close your eyes and let the water cover them. And then, for a time which seems like mercy, you don't know where you are, or remember where you once were, or dream of where you may go. And this one's called, Everything the Traffic Will Allow. There's more to life than poontang, but not when you're 16 and your hands are full of heavy breasts. At the 6 o'clock when the sky and sea turn green, memory in a pencil skirt walks in. Midnight daiquiris, the lingerie dawn, fishing for kisses. The bugles call and sound like hounds. Baguettes in your pocket, a broomstick in your jeans. You think of films with canine themes, the vile politics of charity, the bloody wonder of the sun, the earworm still crawling the corridors of your skull. If you're in bed, get out. If you're sitting, stand up. If you're standing, walk around. Dogs on leashes patrol the lawn. An eight-year-old rubs the belly of a bleached blowfish to make it swell. Stop staring at vacancy. Accept the surrender value of your bonds. Stop raising, go ahead and call. When you get up from your stasis, investigate the trash. You may find a rare Tonto thermos. Think and then think better. Consolidate your outstanding warrants. Adjudicate your selfishness. If you apply the paste of cohesion to the perforations in your life, all that is written in the golden book of dust shall come to pass. When's the competition? When's not the competition? Every dry peeled apple eventually turns brown. Feel and then feel better. Buy something homemade. Forsake the autumn mist. If you're sitting, stand up. If you're standing, walk around. If you're walking around, walk towards something. And this one is called the hard-on collider. After I turn my back on heaven, after I turn my back on hell, after I turn my back on all worldly goods, my dead relatives all ganged up on me. Billy, Billy, what have we done to offend you? Go away, you're dead, I commanded. Their neon faces glowed sullenly, like blood, as it leaks into the eye, turning the vision brown. Have we not yet consummately earned your allegiance? Who taught you to talk so ineptly, I asked. When did you lose your goodness? I liked you when you were alive. Dead, you're just a name. We want you back. I realized this was temptation. Completely naked, how odd its flavor, licorice, and its face fearful. They all held out cats in front of their noses. When did hiding your face behind a cat 
become a thing, I asked. What atrophied you? What atrophied you? They began to shout. I had had enough. I knew what a bastard time was and how miserable children can be if coached long, hard, and often enough. I felt like I was at a birthday party for someone who had not yet been born. An indigent siren expressed its unhappiness. Somewhere, a rope was groping for its knot. Um, and I'll finish with uh, this one. Um, and this poem's title comes from the Book of Job, as uh, do a number of the uh, phrases in the poem. This is called Blackish by Reason of the Ice. I was in the basement. I was in the basement with Sarah, who was reading Job to the baby. I was standing in the basement thinking about Uncle Conrad's terrible black tie, 100% polyester, which he wore to the funeral last Tuesday. I was in the basement with Sarah, whose eyes were eyes of flesh, whose eyes were like the eyelids of mourning, who had made a covenant with mine eyes, and I said to her, Sarah, do you take a bit with your eyes? And she said, what? And I said, do you take a with your eyes? And she said, stop being stupid. Can you hold the baby? And I said, I had not been as infants, which never saw light. And she said, sharpening her eyes upon me, take the fucking baby. And I took the baby. And I rocked the baby, and the baby rocked me. And as I comforted my son, and as my son comforted me, I remembered they called Edward Dahlberg the Job of American letters because he suffered in his art. Many there are who labor like slaves and suffer neglect. Does that make them Job's? Sarah, I called. Do you take it that with your eyes? But she was lost lost in the text and heard me not. And then, just for a moment, I too felt lost, like a child, like someone who meets with darkness in the daytime and gropes in the midday as in the night. Of course, I knew that we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness alone, any more than Uncle Conrad could have worn a different tie to the wake. For life is wind, and death is astonishing. Sarah, I implore, take the baby, for he hath made me weary. And Sarah took the baby with her eyes. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. And, uh, <laughs>